Alright, so hey everyone, uh, today I want to take a look at uh, circularity and uh, how useful it is. Um, circularity, as uh, defined in this gamepad tester, is how well uh, when moving your stick fully uh, you trace a circle and it will give you uh, the error for that. So uh, to demonstrate, I'm using an Xbox One controller with a very worn sticks. Uh, it says 360, but uh, it's an Xbox One controller. Um, but since these sticks are extremely worn, uh, most other players uh, will get uh, less error than this. But as you can see, um, I normally get about 17 to 18 uh, percent error uh, with this controller. And uh, how big of a deal is that? Um, Starting from a software perspective, uh, not really much at all. Uh, the reason for that is uh, in a game that say uses circular thresholds, um, if you uh, move here, that's like 100%, but if you move here, uh, the game will actually ignore any of this additional uh, input. It'll all just consider this 100% movement. So you can move here and here would actually be the same uh, to a game. Uh, there are some games that will utilize this additional input. Uh, sometimes it's because it's incorrectly uh, not capped. Uh, other times, like in the case of Rocket League, uh, this additional input can be used to uh, help uh, flip faster diagonally. And uh, early on in the game's lifespan, controllers that could lean further uh, were preferred uh, to be able to do that. I think um, there's an option added now, so that's unnecessary, but uh, for the most part, games will just ignore uh, any of this additional input. Uh, additionally, uh, you can, uh, it's very easy to, uh, either through controller firmware or software, um, output uh, only uh, values that would uh, line up with a, line up with the circle. So, for example, that's how my uh, anti-dead zone script works by default. So, uh, enabling that, you can now see that the same movements are actually locked um, within the circular range. And uh, if we do another test for this, uh, you can see that the error is uh, very low. So, uh, just from a software perspective, it's very easy to ensure uh, perfect circularity. Uh, but what I want to talk about a little bit is more sort of physical circularity and what I mean by that is uh, the analog mo module itself is uh, square shaped. Um, however, you can't access the full square, uh, the corners of the square, as you can see uh, tracing this, it's making sort of a rounded square shape. Um, and most players will have uh, this to some degree. Uh, and that's because uh, that's the plastic uh, uh, stick boundary that's uh, cutting into uh, the modules range. So if that was perfectly aligned so that um, I would hit the plastic stick boundary here and then you know just trace a circle uh, with that plastic stick boundary uh, within a perfect circle of the modules range, uh, what effects would that have? As far as the benefits, one that would uh, make the range a little more intuitive. So for example, if I move the stick fully diagonally, uh, you can see that um, I'm about 30% uh, further um, than 100% of, of the circular range. So, and if I pulled off from this, I might think that I'm moving, you know, 70 or 80%, but I'm actually still 100 over 100% based on this uh, circular region. So um, having it so that uh, I would hit the plastic boundary uh, here would um, be give a little more tactile feedback for when I'm actually uh, hitting 100% because you actually hit that well before you uh, hit the plastic boundary. Uh, another benefit would be, um, as you can see here, um, I'm moving at 100% and then you can see just how much further I can uh, push the stick. Well, that occurs um, vertically and horizontally as well, but you can't see that because the module values uh, cap. So this the horizontal value, as you can see, caps at one, and uh, this is capping at one as well. 
and uh, there's uh, and you can see here at least with these very uh, this very worn stick uh, the gap between um, either axis capping is just this small region right here uh, now the issue with this capping is for example if I keep moving in the same direction um, the vertical axis caps but the horizontal axis can keep changing um, so the actual stick um, position isn't uh, being conveyed through what the module can output and this actually skews your diagonal movement a little bit um, and in this case a bit more horizontally and if we do this over here it skews this a bit more uh, vertically or yeah vertically so having it so that um, I hit the plastic boundary uh, right here uh, would actually make it so that um, I wouldn't be able to cap uh, the module and so the diagonals uh, wouldn't be um, uh, skewed as much. Uh, it's only skewed a little bit but this would uh, address that uh, so that it's uh, less of an issue. As far as um, the negatives, uh, the biggest one is definitely uh, you wouldn't be able to reach certain thresholds with perfect circularity. Uh, many thresholds are actually outside of uh, this circular region and uh, most often that's because of axial dead zones. Um, axial dead zones will warp um, the thresholds diagonally so that you have to push more diagonally to be able to trigger them. So if you're locked to the circle uh, you wouldn't be able to access them. So in some games you won't be able to uh, run as fast in diagonal directions. You might not be able to turn as fast or access acceleration or sprint thresholds. Uh, two games uh, I can use as examples. Uh, one is Resident Evil 4 HD which has massive dead zones but specifically for the movement and the sort of general camera. Um, these axial dead zones are so large that you actually can't move out of them uh, diagonally. So you would be able to move forward and back and turn left and right but you couldn't actually run uh, diagonally. Uh, you just wouldn't be able to access that threshold. The same is true for uh, the camera. Uh, you could uh, look left and right and look up and down but you couldn't access the uh, threshold to look diagonally. So instead of having eight directions for looking uh, you can only access four of them. The other example I'll use is Halo 3. Halo 3 has a very interesting uh, well, actually, all the classic halos have very interesting uh, acceleration threshold, which kind of dips inward in the corners, but it actually dips outside of uh, the circular region, so you wouldn't be able to access um, the acceleration range uh, uh, for those angles. So there'd be a dead space there uh, for without uh, being able to access the acceleration. Uh, additionally, the this acceleration jump isn't the outer dead zone. Uh, you actually hit this and can move a bit further. So uh, just within the axial dead zone uh, you would have slightly different uh, speeds accessible uh, to you uh, because of that. Uh, the Halo community has referred to uh, this kind of situation as slow turn where thumbstick isn't able to output fully and uh, thus can not turn as fast as you can um, in one direction versus the other. Uh, this is a big part and why uh, in some of my videos I say that it's dangerous to have thresholds that are outside of this because while most player sticks can lean outside, um, it, how much uh, varies on the controller. So, uh, so it's always better to have your thresholds uh, within this circular region. The other uh, issue is simple manufacturing uh, differences uh, and minor error in that uh, can affect this. So for example the analog module uh, may not be perfectly uh, aligned and if especially if you replace it yourself um, to it so you might find yourself uh, unable to access uh, certain values but very easily access values in another direction and as a crude uh, demonstration like this if the analog module was offset uh, and otherwise uh, the plastic boundary is perfectly aligned uh, you might get something uh, like this where uh, this isn't well drawn 
but if it's offset, you could make a perfect circle, but it wouldn't align perfectly to the analog module. Uh, this is sort of the case uh, for, and not the module specifically necessarily, but uh, I had bought some new thumbsticks for uh, this controller uh, to replace the worn ones, but when replacing them, they were actually uh, too fat. So in one direction, I could only move, uh, say, 97% of the way, and the other direction, I can move 100% uh, easily. Um, so I, I would actually, uh, these control or with those new sticks, uh, this controller would uh, have that issue. So uh, that's something that uh, you really, uh, perfect circularity wouldn't really be uh, great for. And, you know, in an ideal world where games were set up uh, ideally and uh, there was no imperfections in uh, hardware, perfect circularity would be fine. But as things are, uh, some error kind of outside of this circle uh, is useful. Uh, you don't want to be able to access the full analog module because then uh, so much of your stick isn't giving you uh, useful values and uh, you can have uh, that issue uh, with slightly skewing uh, diagonal movement uh, more so, but you also don't want perfect circularity uh, just so that you can address um, imperfections in how games are set up as well as uh, manufacturing differences. So uh, personally, I don't think uh, circularity matters too much. If you just get some uh, uh, middle ground error, uh, you're probably fine uh, and you don't really need to worry if the controllers uh, differ too much on that. But um, that's about it. So uh, thanks for watching, and everyone, have a good rest of your day.